My name is Paul O'Shaughnessy, and this is your Revolution 250. I'm here on the Lexington Battle Green, in front of the Jonathan Harrington House. The Battle of Lexington. So many opinions, so many accounts. What really happened? I won't pretend to know everything about it, but I'll make an attempt. Think of this as a pond with people on the shore throwing stones in and these ripples approach each other and they all build into a giant wave. That happens here on this green. For months, well over a year actually, since the Boston Tea Party, Massachusetts and its neighboring colonies had been descending into rebellion arming themselves. The militia had gone over to a rebellious and revolutionary cause. In Concord, the Shire town of Middlesex County, the committees of safety had been gathering weapons and particularly cannon. This was no small pile. There were weapons capable of equipping an army of many, many thousands of men. General Gage, in Boston, now the military governor of Massachusetts, attempting to restore order and lawful government, in his view, to Massachusetts, has sent expeditions into the countryside under orders to not make things worse. If you run into opposition, back away. But finally, from London comes the order, end this and end it now. And you have all of the resources you're going to get to do it. Gage in uh, orders Lieutenant Colonel Francis Smith and his second, Major John Pitcairn, to march with 700 grenadiers and light infantry to Concord over the night of April 18th into 19th, seize and destroy these arms. They head out, but they are known. Riders, many of them out that night, go to all of the towns and alert the militia, who then form. Among those is Lexington. Paul Revere, the most famous of the riders, comes through here at about midnight. Captain John Parker of the Lexington Minutemen assembles his men on this green waiting for the British to arrive. He is told that they're on the way. Nobody arrives. He finally tells his men, if you live nearby, you can go home. The rest of you, we're going to go to Buckman Tavern. He sends riders down the road to try to find the British column. They don't come back. Some of them have been captured by the light infantry. At the last possible moment, he sends a rider who sees the column only a couple of miles away. He rides back, the militiamen come out here onto the green and assemble. He can only get about 80 of them out here on the green in time. What has happened with the British column is realizing that secrecy has been lost, Smith turns to Pitcairn and says, take your fastest riders, your fastest marchers, light infantry, six companies, and go like the wind, get to Concord and seize the two bridges beyond the town, South and North Bridge. It is that advance guard that runs into the Lexington militia here on the green at about 5.30 in the morning. Pitcairn, or one of the officers, rides forward and in no uncertain terms, using some very harsh language, tells these militiamen to disperse and lay down their arms, which they do not do. But critically, and this is something that Captain Parker does not know, is that they have been given orders from London, and Smith has received orders, verbally at least, if any body of men dare oppose you with force of arms, you will order them to disperse or you will attack them. Very different. And in that last moment, I think Parker looks into their eyes and realizes this is not going to be Salem. This is not going to be one of the other encounters. They are here in earnest. He turns and orders his men to disperse. In that moment, somebody fires a shot. I have my opinions, but I'm not going to try to understand who actually fired that, that weapon. The soldiers open fire at short range perhaps under 100 feet here on the green. Eight militiamen are killed, 10 are wounded. Jonathan Harrington being one of them, he drags himself, according to legend, to the, to the front of his house and dies there in front of his wife. 
That is a quarter of the men that were on this green. British soldiers are by all accounts out of control, running through with bayonets, chasing after militiamen who have dispersed, running for their lives, as you would too. It is not a matter of courage. They had plenty. Smith arrives, horrified at what's going on, finds a drummer, gets the men back into ranks, and they decide then and there a fateful decision that even though secrecy has clearly been lost, they will continue on to conquer. And of course, what they do not realize is that at that moment, thousands of militiamen are closing in from them on all sides. The Lexington militia go on to fight more that day, quite a remarkable feat. But in that moment, the world changed, and it changed right here.